Did you know that in your childhood, you might have played with toys so dangerous they could have killed you? You might not have known you almost died. Today, we'll show you the scariest toys ever made. Ones that were banned, but not before claiming their victims. Today, kids play house or doctor, but back then, boys only wanted to play war. In the 60s, helicopters, ships, and particularly cannons were all the rage, especially those from the Civil War by Remco. Remember them? But if you think they were just plastic toys, you're mistaken. They were real weapons, but made for kids. But do you know the stories behind these toys? The founder of Remco Industries served in the Navy during World War II, and when the war ended, he bought surplus military equipment and started making toys out of them. And do you know how much harm those cannons could cause? They shot plastic balls with huge force up to 30 to 50 feet away. If another child got in the way of one of those balls, bruises and black eyes were the least of their worries. Sometimes it was much worse, especially when kids were playing not only the classic war game, but also the nuclear one. The Atomic Energy Laboratory Toy by Gilbert U-238 had good intentions, but something went very, very wrong. You see, inventor Alfred Gilbert wanted to create a toy that would educate future generations of chemists and engineers in the States. How was it supposed to work, you might ask? So, in this Atomic Energy Lab, kids could play with nuclear reactions, atomic stuff, and all that kind of stuff. Now, what could possibly go wrong? In 2006, pop culture publication Radar Magazine called this lab as one of the 10 most dangerous toys of all time. Why? Because of the toy's radioactivity. The product was swiftly pulled from shelves before kids could start glowing in the dark. Lab was a complicated toy, but how about something simpler and even deadlier? Clackers may seem like a simple toy, but they were incredibly harmful. You might be wondering how such silly balls could cause any harm, but let me explain. Clackers were made of two plastic balls connected by a string with a ring for your finger. Kids slip their fingers into the ring and swing their hand trying to clack the balls together to make a clattering sound. This toy not only looked like a weapon, but acted like one too. In the attempt to clack the balls together, Kids often hit themselves or others in the face, resulting in bruises, nosebleeds, and many other injuries. And what happened to them next? Eventually, they were taken off the market after causing too many injuries. Clackers seemed harmless, but what about the fact that something as silly as blowing up balloons can also end tragically? Super Elastic Bubble Plastic took toys to a whole different level. So what was it all about? Well, this toy consisted of a tube of sticky plastic substance and a straw used for blowing bubbles. Now, what made them so dangerous? Chemically, these bubbles contain polyvinyl acetate dissolved in acetone with added plasticizers and ethyl acetate. So, while blowing these balloons, you were inhaling all of these harmful fumes. But wait, it gets worse. Not only was inhaling dangerous, but also leaks from the substance. Plus, the product was highly flammable, so tragedies weren't uncommon. Due to these issues, production of super elastic bubble plastic was eventually stopped, and the material was completely banned. However, the toy was so popular that similar toys began to be produced more and more, and it was impossible to stop it. Just like it was impossible to stop the damage caused by another toy. The wham -O Air Blaster was nothing but an air gun. You could use it to blow out candles on a cake from a distance or to blow a newspaper out of Dad's hands. But kids got bored of using the toy in its intended way, so they started getting creative. And you know what they came up with? They aimed the Air Blaster straight into their friend's ears to see what would happen. The result? Permanent hearing damage. Later on, they also discovered that anything that fit into the barrel could be shot out with a force like a projectile. It was a close call before they started using it as a flamethrower. 
did you ever have such silly ideas when you were a kid too? But you don't need to have silly ideas to know that another toy can cause harm. We're asking, who let this hit the shelves? Swing wing is like a hula hoop for your head. Just looking at it can make you dizzy. Imagine the effects of playing with it for too long. Let's list them out. Brain shakes, brain bleeds, and spinal injuries. All the kids who played with this in their childhood probably need a chiropractor now. But surely kids who were making creepy crawlers in the 60s needed a doctor too. Were you one of them? Before we move on to the next part, we'd like to remind you to give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and let's get back to the topic. The terrifying creepy crawlers work something like this. You poured a chemical substance into a mold, it solidified, and voila! You got all sorts of creepy shapes, especially disgusting spiders, cockroaches, and such. The problem with this toy was that the oven heated up to a scorching 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and the liquid plastic was quite toxic, causing waves of chemical poisoning across the states. Despite its dangers, this toy was so popular with kids that even after being removed from shelves, it kept making a comeback, and people have huge nostalgia for it. Just like you girls probably miss your first toy oven, but do you know the real truth about it? The Easy Bake Oven is an iconic toy, but it's also remembered for causing even a finger amputation. But how did that happen? The oven used a light bulb to heat dishes up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, allowing kids to make treats like pretzels, cakes, and cookies. Sounds like fun, right? Well, not quite, especially not for the thousands of injured children. Kids being kids, of course, they'd stick their fingers inside, and many ended up with burns, some even second or third degree burns. In some cases, toddlers' fingers got caught in the oven's opening. In one such incident, a five-year-old girl needed partial finger amputation. And from something like that, perhaps the only thing worse is a toy that led children to paralysis. This toy is called Slip and Slide, but it might as well be called Slip and Die. The concept is pretty simple. You lay down a plastic mat, douse it with water and lubricant, and slide away. It's easy to have a blast on it, but it's just as easy to get seriously hurt. What were the most common injuries? Broken necks, brain damage, full body paralysis, and even death. And did the company face any consequences for all of that? Transco, the company behind Slip and Slide, was sued by a boy who was left quadriplegic and had to pay out $12 million in damages. Despite its dangers, the product was never completely recalled as it should have been. Just like charts, which you can still buy at your own risk. You're probably familiar with playing darts, right? But have you ever thought about how dangerous it can be? Darts are typically several inches long and have a weighted metal tip. They're meant to be thrown from below towards a horizontal target on the ground, where the weighted end hits first and embeds into the ground. The target is usually a plastic ring, but as you can imagine, Sometimes darts miss their mark and hit someone. You might wonder, what could happen if someone gets hit by a dart? Well, contrary to what you might think, it's very serious. Lawn darts have been linked to thousands of injuries and the deaths of at least three children. So, they should be banned like other dangerous toys, right? Well, they were banned only in the United States. In Europe, you can still throw them at targets and people without any restrictions. And what do you think? Which toy was the most dangerous? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video.